Listen up, bub. You're listening to you, me, and YTV. Did you grow up in Canada? Were you alive in the 90s? Did you love YTV? F*** yeah, you did. Welcome, everybody, to a special uh, version of Yumi and YTV. Usually, we do video shows, but at the um, request of Mr. Cathal Dodd here, uh, we we are doing this strictly audio, so you're just going to be hearing the voice of the voice of Wolverine today. Cathal, how are you? And, uh, okay, I'm going to stop you right there because right. you said you said Cathal. Okay, well, how do you pronounce your name, dude? Well, no, it's I, I don't even go by that name. All right, how do you go by that- it? Cal, C A L. Cal, all right, Cal Dodd. That's, that that's the way the credit is on the you know on the X Men show. Okay. C C A L D O D D. You must have got that information from uh, Wikipedia or something. Ah, uh, it's from Facebook actually. Okay, well, it, uh, because I used a, an odd name because I couldn't get Cal Dodd because someone <laughs> in Florida had it. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I was, so, I, so, that makes so much more fucking sense because you're the first human I've ever talked to named Cathal. So I well, just, yeah, and and by the, and so uh, you don't. You don't pronounce the T, yeah, and it's it's Gaelic for mm. Charles, and it, it is pronounced Cahal. Ah, yeah. So okay. don't even go there because, so, because when we when we came here from Ireland, yeah. I was born in Dublin. We came here when I was very young. I went to start going to public school, you know, school in in uh, Port Dover, Ontario, and the kids were couldn't pronounce it, of course, because we're all in grade, you know, five, four, five, and they were calling me. I, I went home to mom and said, "Mom, we're, we got to do something about this name because they're calling me a bovine. They're calling me cattle. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> they're calling me cattle, and then this guy's going to go to cow. You know that." And so she said, okay, okay, we'll do it right away. So we got rid of Kaha, which only they called me that at home. And it, we changed it to C-A-L. All right. Well, and God, God forbid, when I did Circus, you know, and I, you know, starring Cal Dodge, Therese Lawrence. Five years and I'm still sane. In your opinion. <laughs> and until next week when we invite you to run away with us and join the circus. Good night, everybody. Good night. I was many times in Montreal doing commercials. And, well, and the show was big there. I worked with Jeanette Renault uh, for years. Oh, you must know Jeanette Renault. Uh, I've, I've heard the name, Cal. <laughs> I've heard that name. Okay, I, I forget how old you are. Okay, there you go. I'm about 35 years young, which is pretty much yeah. your demographic. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. I'm old enough to know ex- the entire X Men repertoire, and I'm still young enough to be giddy about the fact we're doing this. So oh, that's fantastic. All right, so this X Men TV show is a it. This cartoon was a cartoon unlike others, where um, there was multiple part episodes, and within the first episode, they introduced the fact that a character can die, another character be- could be incarcerated. Like it starts off super serious. What was? How did you find out about this show? Or about the actual the, the animated series, the animated series, or X Men in general? Were you familiar with them before I, you got the role? No, no, and I'll tell you that no one in the cast had a clue as to what the X Men were, who they were, what they did, or the characters that they you know won in their auditions, their you know respective auditions. I was called to do it, and I had never done uh, a voice. I'd done one voiceover in my life because I was a singer, and I did jingles and commercials and stuff like that. I was in Montreal many times. And, uh, you know, just singing commercials, studio singer, backing up people to their albums, etc. And this came out of the blue. I did for one a year. I did uh, a Chrysler commercial in Canada uh, for about a year and a half, two, whatever. And that was my only voiceover I'd ever done without an agent, sans agent. And uh, you, all these voiceover people have agents. I had no agent because singers don't have agents. And now say hello to the co-star of CTV's circus. That can only be the great Cal Dodd. Villains and varlets and Hollywood starlets were all under contract to Louis B. Mayer. But did you know that this Hollywood mogul originally hailed from Canada Fair? This woman phoned me out of the blue and said, would you like to audition for a part in an animated series called X-Men? And I said, okay, I don't know what that is. She said, well, just, you know, just go. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll just go then. And I went, and uh, she said the, the character's name is uh, that you'll be auditioning for is Wolverine. I said, okay. And then, of course, I just started phoning the world to find out, you know, who are the X-Men and what are, you know, Wolverine and what's this, who are these people? Went, of course, to a comic book store, found a comic book. Yeah, there was, there was no, uh, I don't think we had um, internet like we do now, you know, where you can Google, no. Google. It, no, it was, that wasn't there. Went to the audition the next day after she called me. 
and walked up to, into the studio. The guys from New York and L.A. were there, and uh, they handed me this picture of this dude. And I said, ooh, nice pants. <laughs> and and uh, showed me the picture of him and gave me my first line that I ever read for this guy. And, and they, I said, well, who, does, who do you, what's he sound like? What, like what, do you, what do you see this guy as? Well, right away, they said, uh, so, you know, sort of like Clint Eastwood attitude or sort of sounding. Okay. They said Steve McQueen, and I love that because Steve McQueen was a short guy and, you know, uh, very into himself and very quiet. I, li- I really liked him. And then I threw in a bit of uh, Wolfman Jack, you know, Wolfman Jack, baby. That's that kind of voice from that part of your voice because yeah, I got the midnight special, that stuff. <laughs> so I incorporated some of that into it. And the first song, they gave me this line and explained the scenario. And I, I said, oh, I love this. I said, this is great. I grew up in a little small town in Lake Erie called Fort Dover. And there's a lot of fishermen. There were a lot of fights and a lot of playing hockey and a town of 3000 people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so half the lines that they gave me to read were lines I'd heard before. <laughs> in and around, in, in and around, honest to God, in and around fights and, you know, just the natural, the day-by-day living in Port Dover. Nothing hurts the blob. Okay, round boy. Let's dance. So, this is my very first thing I read ever for this guy that I fell in love with, Wolverine Logan. I said, uh, I don't know if there's anything prefacing this line, but it was like, you like picking on people smaller than you? Well, I'm smaller than you. Pick on me. And they just they just kind of froze. I went, holy shit. <laughs> they rushed in and gave me some more lines and stuff like any anytime, pretty boy. And I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so that was the the scenario. And like that, I said, well, okay. I never knew who this person was or the X Men or anything, and nor did any of the rest of the cast. Beast. I, I've done a couple of comic cons with Beast, and you know he talks about that about like he had no idea <laughs> who they were. Oh well, I think that I think that brought a lot to your performances though, because you guys I, you guys didn't sound like you were in a cartoon all the time. You guys kind of sounded oh, never. More, more like a, a melodramatic. Uh, you know, you sounded oh, it was yeah, like that, much it's more. Funny, like, right? Mm. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because most of the and all the most of the actors um, were in voice actors in the series that they hired for, and it, I don't know whether they did it on purpose, had done theater or uh, movies or television. They weren't just voiceover people. We were like actors and on stage and stuff like that. And I don't know whether they were looking for that specifically. Wolverine, go back! Ah! What's wrong, Gene? It's more... Can't you feel it? Morph, I don't sense anything. Uh, Beast, uh, George Booza is like huge. He's done major Sinbad movies and all kinds. And he was one of the only one of the X-Men that was in the very first X-Men movie in Toronto that they shot here. He's the only one of the X-Men from the animated series that you bothered to get, you know, to do that. Yeah, he was a truck driver in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, a lot of people said that and say that all the time that they felt the passion and felt everything that Wolverine was saying like they they felt it and they could it 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 affected them and it wasn't just as you say a cartoon series. This was a like well to what other what other cartoon or yeah cartoon has an intro like previously on X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> no, we are previously on Donald Duck. No, it doesn't happen. No. You know. I hate so and they that's what they were and and as eric will tell you those those two are just dolls and like fantastic writers and well did you get the book by the way i uh, ordered it off amazon i should get it by monday oh okay you're gonna go you you won't be able to put it down i'm sure i won't uh it i only i only realized its existence about a week ago and um three weeks ago i would say i had uh my friend gabe on who i believe has emailed you too actually he's a uh, oh gabe gabe's yeah. my best friend now yeah the, <laughs> uh, the the artist he is no i love gabe yeah he's got a really crazy wolverine tattoo and um but also he was he and i were talking he's like and we were just talking about cartoons and stuff that we're passionate about and about the x-men and i i gotta say it's like that was our first impression of these characters and those showrunners did such a good job at paying tribute to the seriousness 
and the tones of of what those comic books were that oh exactly i used it as a gateway into x-men fandom it was those cartoons and i could see 10 years of storytelling within a few episodes and it never seemed too rushed even now no. as an adult no. i watch it now and i'm like no this is very well paced and uh yeah well i'm i'll tell you what right I, I watched it i i got them a year ago because i just started doing cons about a year ago Mm-hmm. I just, I just, you know, I didn't realize the demand and then like how, how much I love doing them. And like the, the, I can't believe the fans as I, I'll probably go overboard with that because they are unbelievable, but I just got the all five seasons about a year ago and I had to sit down and start and watch them from the beginning. And it was honestly, God, it was, it, there's cer- certain parts where, where I was actually crying again, watching because you know you get you get a, a part in an animated series. I keep see. I, I don't call it a cartoon because it's not a cartoon. No, but it's not. In my in my, well, I can't even say that. It just doesn't seem right. You know, Popeye was a cartoon, and and all of you know. Uh, another thing Gabe and I were talking about is uh, it's actually because of him that I reached out to you and um, to Eric because he mentioned that the series was recorded in Canada, and I'm like, excuse yep. me. <laughs> And by and then I looked it up. Hey, excuse me, excuse me. You're not alone there. Yeah. No one in Toronto here. They don't know. We have never done the Toronto Comic Con ever. There's no interest. They're not interested in the X Men, which just blows my cookies. Wow. Because when I get the reaction I get in Texas and Dallas and all, uh, you know, where I've been so far in Hartford, Connecticut, whatever, they are head over heels when they see. They can't believe Wolverines here. Like they just freak out. And it just it makes me go crazy. And it's just like in Toronto, it's like, and which is tip, so typical of us Canadians. Yeah. We're so cool until they find out that it's a big hit and stuff. Then they say, oh, yeah, he's from Canada, you know. Yeah. So they don't even know we existed or that we did that and that we're all Canadian. It's it's insane because, like, I, I don't know, yeah. Can, Canada is really bad at, at celebrating our own. In fact, that's why my show kind of exists because I, speci- I specifically go after uh shows that were made in Canada in the 90s because if we don't talk about them this knowledge and that that age will disappear like luckily X-Men is famous around the world and will go on but there's a lot of Canadian projects that are beloved by many except Canada is not really good at re-releasing DVDs you know what I mean <laughs> Quebec is the only province that has their own in Canada their own star system Mm-hmm. And they do. They they do. They both certainly do. And that's when uh, Jeanette Renault, when I was singing backgrounds for her and doing some, uh, you know, she performed somewhere and we'd fly to Kapuska Sing, as she put it, Kapuska Sing, you know, Kapuska Sing, whatever. <laughs> but she was a great, great singer and still is. Uh, she used to sing at the Montreal Canadiens games when they were going for the cup or, you know, in the playoffs last year. Yeah. Not this year, last year. Anyway, um, she said... Come with me to Quebec. She said to me, this is when I was just singing. She said, come to me to uh, Mon- Montreal and, and you will be a star within a year. <laughs> she <laughs> said, I'll, I'll teach you like some French and stuff. You can do some records, recordings. And, you know, I said, no, well, no, no, thanks. But it was, it was kind offer. Okay. Only in Quebec. With a mouth like yours. We should have just tried to sneak in here with a marching band. If you think that's bad, you should hear me sing. Well, except for, again, when I would go to Montreal to do a commercial for Wonder Bra, which I did many times, flew in, do the record, we'd go to a bar. I'd walk into the bar, and with my the the guy, the producer that hired me, we'd go into this bar, and I'd walk down the steps, and he he would say, because I didn't speak French, he'd say he did, he said, do you hear that? I said, what? what? He said, the, g- the girls are pointing on, uh, says, c'est lui, c'est lui. <laughs> going like, what? what? What is that? What are you talking about? Well, they recognize you from circus, you idiot. <laughs> and I was like, because, but in Toronto, you think that would ever happen? No. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, he's like, shut up. They're coming out of the woodwork. Like, I know uh, voiceover takes place before the animation. So did you do, uh, did you record season after season right away? In anticipation that there's going to be more, or did you record 13 and been and we're like, let's hope for the best. First six episodes we did in the studio in, in Toronto, uh, of course, and um, we all all six of us would be in the six or seven of us would be in the studio at the same time, and that got to be really stupid for the engineer because he had to. We had even when we were acting and the voices lines and stuff, we had to wait two seconds before we could speak after the last guy said his line. Okay, that lasted for about. I think four, five, six episodes. And then the engineer said, I, I, this is stupid. 
we have to bring them in separately, which we did. The only time that they would let us do that uh, would be when myself and uh, Don Franks, God bless him, uh, rest in peace, uh, Sabretooth, he died a year and a half ago or two years ago now. Whenever we had a scene together, we had to do it <laughs> because it didn't matter because all our growls sound exactly the same. And all the whole the whole thing was just screaming, growling, like, and like wow, <laughs> just, you know, fighting. And it was better if he were there so I knew I could watch him. You know, when we were doing the fight scene, he'd be right across from me and he'd, you know, growling and stuff. And I could feed off what he was doing. Even though I had lines I had to read, specific lines, as he did. But it just, it was much better. And I, I miss those days of doing those scenes with him. The only time I, reason I don't miss them is that I couldn't talk after them. <laughs> <laughs> or sing, let alone talk. Sing, forget it. <laughs> It's just speaking of Don, I mean, he was a great guy. Mm -hmm. And he, there was the one episode, the episode where he's hitting uh, Wolverine are fighting. It's wintertime. And they're way up north. And he's, he's hit, Wolverine ends up getting thrown over the cliff and down into the water below. And they're, they're yelling. Uh, Sabretooth is yelling down at him. You always never were as good as I. Well, you know, almost the same kind of voice. And I was, I, mean, I just, Wolverine, of course, is so cool at this point. He's just like happy that he's down where he is, hanging on to an iceberg, and he's floating. And of course, they go to a close up of him, and he's, and he says, looks up and he listens to that, and he shakes his head and goes. At least I won't have to listen to your flapping lips anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just classic lines. Yeah, the greatest lines. That's thanks to Eric and Julia, you know. Yeah, they gave you this great line in season three. Oh, jeez. They, they give you this great line in season three that were, where they actually really show tribute to the Clint Eastwood inspiration behind it, where you do a take. Oh, jeez, yeah. The, the, <laughs> oh, you mean the Dirty Harry line? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. That, well, here, we'll do the Dirty Harry line. So it's like. Uh, let me think. Jesus Christ, it's been three days of this. I know what you're thinking, punk. punk. Question, Question is, can I get Wolverine before he turns me into shish kebab with those claws? claws. Well, bub, seeing see as, as how these claws, claws are adamantium, adamantium the, the strongest, strongest metal known, and, and can slice through, through vanadium steel, steel like a hot knife, knife through, through butter, butter bunny. bunny. You, you gotta, gotta ask yourself, yourself do, I do I feel lucky? Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing how this voice comes out of you and it sounds like you're not like, you know, squeezing your throat shut in order to produce this. Like, it sounds almost no, no. like you're comfortable doing it. Well, it, well, it does, right? Because I've, I've been doing it for the last three days. Yeah. No, for people, they come up and they want your autograph and the picture with you and stuff. And then one guy, right, he, he, was, and he hit an afro. This big, this black dude. A beautiful guy, and he's got his son with him, and he comes. It's right when we're about to pack up and leave, and he only said, "I gotta get, this, I gotta get this done, man. You gotta do this." He said, "What?" He said, a vocal. Thing. I just want you. Uh, my son will film us, um, and he loved Wolverine. He said, uh, "What did he ask me to say?" I said, "So he's and it was a huge afro, three, two, one, go." And he said, "Listen up, bub. Anybody that messes, anybody that messes with Afro Top here messes with me." <laughs> that's all he wanted anybody who messes with afro top here messes with me just the look on his face when he heard and then he saw it back on his on his own phone he just jumped up in the air and we hugged and he said you know you're just such a big part of my childhood and that's what they all say and they mean it from the bottom of their hearts it's well, astounding so i'm so happy that i got to do this role and this cartoon or this animated series yeah, because it's not just a cartoon yeah. that it's not just a cartoon that like entertained kids when they were young. Like, oh, look at these colorful characters making me laugh. Uh, X Men taught a lot of moral lessons about acceptance, oh, uh, oh. difference, and I'm like, I kind of oh, like. Yeah. It's it it's amazing how the series would later get more wacky, go into space and all that stuff. But they took their time. They kept the threat real and close to the heart in the beginning. The beginning, it was against Sentinels who were created yeah. to pretty much kill you because you're different. You know, like it's uh, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Okay. Well, when you were first reading this script and stuff like that, did you realize yeah. like, did you realize the weight of what this show would be like? No, no. We have no. We like I said, we had no idea what this was going to turn into. Mm. I did after the first year. I mean, it was so cool. I mean, I just, I just loved the fact because I hated bullies, hated them because they bullied me and uh, my sister 
Uh, and I hate them. I got them all back, but I, I just can't stand them. And I, I loved Wolverine for that. You swore to me that Wolverine had drowned. Here's Johnny. And what you just said, like they, they touch on that all the time. But at, at, at all of these comic kinds, I'm also amazed at the number of autistic people that show up. This guy came. This guy was about well, your age, 35, and he has his daughter who is about 12. And the two of them they were dressed in black, and they came up, and he sat stood in front of me, and he just started this speech, and he said, "I am only here because of you, and uh, my daughter and I are both autistic, and um, I've introduced her to X Men." And um, I was teased and bullied because of my autism. And the speech went on because, you know, he was autistic and he just had to get it out quickly and stuff. And he was standing beside his wife, whom I didn't know was his wife. And he finished the whole thing. And I was like in tears and just said, he just said, I don't know, he had, he had a, a Wolverine outfit on, dressed in black, and he had the, the uh, um, claws. So I went, I said, uh, I just can't thank you enough for sharing that with me. And he said, no, you're the only reason I'm here and alive. Wow. Yeah. So I went, I took my hand and, and to shake his hand, he took the claw off and shook my hand and turned around with his daughter and they walked away. The wife came back. She didn't really, but she watched them walk away. And she came over to me and she ran over and she said, I, I can't believe what just happened. I, I said, I'm sorry, what? She said, well, I'm his wife. I've been married to him for you know 20 years, 15, 17 years. However, the old the girl was 10, like I said, or 11 yeah. And she said, because he was autistic, he has never, ever touched anyone's hand, anyone's, and touched another human being. But this was Wolverine he was meeting. Wow. He touched, has never touched anybody else's hand. And that's just why he shook my hand and quickly turned and walked away. But he was just, he explained why he was there, why he loved Wolverine, why he was, he was still alive. And his daughter was just so beside him and, you know, it was fantastic. That kind of shit happens all the time. And I don't mean shit. I mean, by that, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff happens <laughs> all, all the time. It's all good. Swear away, Logan. That's how <laughs> avid they are. I've never actually huh? heard Wolverine swear before. So let's get a few of those in. <laughs> unless, you, unless, <laughs> unless you don't want to decimate the character, which is fine. <laughs> You have to have seen you have to have seen the thing that's on YouTube about Wolverine attempting to swear. <laughs> they, they they've done a, a a farce on the whole thing. Okay, and they bring up all those lines like, "All right, you egg sucking piece of gutter trash, out of my way, dog breath, come on, you piece of." Well, here here's the interesting thing about that, Cal, is that uh, they made a pilot prior to the series that you were in. They made they tried to make an X Men series that was way more. Oh, like, don't even don't are you go. Are what? you going with the Australian guy? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Toy line, you left before I could properly welcome you. Welcome her. Wait, she's not joining the X-Men, is she? She's just a kid. Wolverine. <laughs> as as a Canadian citizen, did that offend you to your core? <laughs> Check out more episodes of You, Me, and YTV on Facebook and YouTube. Sweet one-of-a-kind interviews with PJ Fresh Bill, PJ Paul, Tarzan Dan, the cast of Student Bodies, the voice acting cast of Sailor Moon, and much, much more. Exclusively on Union TV. Season 2.